All right, this is OpenStax US History, Chapter 15, Section 2, Early Mobilization and War. So in the last chapter, chapter, actually this chapter, but last section 15.1, we outlined the two sides for the Civil War. You have the Union on the one side. This is the North or the Free States. You have the Confederacy on the other side, the South or the slave states. Uh, but also remember we talked about these states called the border states. These were slave states that fought for the Union side, but essentially these are the two sides of the war, the Union and the Confederacy. So when the war first broke out, when those shots were fired on Fort Sumter, which marked the beginning of the Civil War, there was enthusiasm and expectations on both sides. Most notably, the expectation for a quick union victory. And a lot of that had to do with the advantages that the Union or the North had at the onset of the war. Uh, both sides believed that they could win, but certainly for Northerners, they believed that this would be a very quick and bloodless war. These expectations, of, of course, turned out to be very, very wrong, and the Civil War dragged on for four bloody years. The first major battle was Bull Run, the first major land engagement. Despite the fact that Fort Sumter was the first shots fired, nobody was actually killed in the bombardment and taking over of Fort Sumter by the Confederacy. The first major battle was uh, Bull Run. Now, in terms of the Civil War itself, not really much is fought on the, uh, on the ocean or on the sea. And that was because the Union had a major naval advantage. There was some, but really when it came to whether or not the Confederacy would win or lose, uh, that would be determined by uh, the land engagements when armies met on the battlefield. But the Union proceeded to implement a naval blockade on the South that was to cut off vitally needed supplies that the South relied upon, uh, most notably things like weapons, clothing, boots, uh, bullets, etc., etc. The southern economy was heavily based on cotton, so it really required um, uh, the South to import goods. And even though the Union tried to block off the South, it wasn't always not always effective. And that was because merely because the South was just so large. But when it came to any major major naval engagements, typically the Union had the advantage there. Now the Confederacy placed their capital city at Richmond, Virginia. So this is the Confederate capital. And of course, the capital of the United States is Washington, DC. So right there in Virginia, you had the Union capital, you had the Confederate capital, and much of the battles that take place during the Civil War happen between these two capital cities. This is, of course, in Virginia. And most of the major battles, really where the war is going to be fought and won or fought and lost, take place in Virginia, both by efforts to capture each other's capital city. Uh, the first battle that took place, the Battle of Bull Run, also called Manassas. This is just another name for the first battle in the Civil War. And it was when Union forces were marching on Richmond in an effort to capture the capital city. Initially in that battle, the Union or the North was winning, as most expected. But by the evening of the battle, the Confederates emerge victorious. This is going to be a long uh, kind of excuse me, pattern that occurs in Virginia where the Union Army simply can't get its, um, you know, can't really get victory on the battlefield. So uh, after that war, it caused both sides really to kind of reconsider this idea of a quick Union victory after the Confederacy won the first battle or the South won the first battle, you know, this kind of started to fade a little bit more and expectations needed to be adjusted. Now, when we looked at the balance sheet of the war, right, that is advantages and disadvantages, the Union has most of the meaningful advantages, although there were some in which the Confederacy have. Uh, two we can point out here. One was sort of the tactics involved in the war, that the Confederacy was fighting a defensive war, uh, it was really 
up to the Union to attack. The Confederacy left the Union, goes up to the North to go and attack the Confederacy. So in terms of the maybe the tactics, the South had the advantage there. Also in terms of geography, uh, the South was fighting more or less on home soil. Most of the major battles would have to take place in the South or potentially take place in the South. Uh, and the geography South was very big. You know, commentators from Europe remarked that the Confederacy is essentially the Russia of the Americas. It was such a large territory. And this was especially true of the effort to try and put a naval blockade on the South. There's simply just so much coastline. So in terms of fighting a defensive war, in terms of fighting on a large home soil, so to speak, these were advantages for the Confederacy. Uh, however, there were more disadvantages. In terms of the economy, the Southern economy was based mostly on cotton. There was really no value outside of that. And in order to fund the war, the South would either have to trade, borrow, or print. And mostly when it came to financing the war, the Confederacy printed money. And this led to large levels of inflation during the war. Whereas the North had much more in terms of banking, they had reserves they could spend. It's true that cotton is very valuable, but cotton in order to get there or to translate that value into something you could use for the war effort, you're gonna be required to trade with other countries in order to do that. In terms of population, the Confederacy had a much smaller population as compared to the North. Now the Union, of course, all the Union advantages, population larger. So in terms of the army, the Union army is much larger. The Union also has more money when it comes to financing. Wars are very, very expensive. Money is a very useful thing to have when fighting a war. The biggest advantage probably is the industry and the railroads. This is the ability to produce war-related supplies, but also to transport war related supplies. So when it came to guns, ammunition, clothing, boots, the North had much better quality and much more of those things. Whereas the South, because they were based, you know, entirely on cotton, really struggled to get those war supplies. And even when you produce them, then you're stuck with the burden of transporting them. And of course, when we talk about things like trains, uh, ships, which of course, if the Union has a much stronger Navy, then all rivers and water lanes to transport supplies also favor the North as well. So for example, in the South, there was a lot of agricultural land. During the war, the South had enough food to feed its army, but it didn't have a way of reliably transporting that food to its armies. Uh, one disadvantage we might say, so we can chalk these up to advantages. One disadvantage of the North though, is that they'll have to fight the offensive war. In other words, um, it is up to the North to go into the South, attack the South, and bring them back into the Union because they're essentially trying to break away. Uh, initially, despite expectations that this would be a very quick war, it soon kind of devolved into a military stalemate between both sides, the Union and the Confederacy. In Virginia, it was General George B. McClellan who was named General and Chief. He is in charge of Union forces in Virginia. And like I had mentioned before, in this very kind of crude illustration here, most of the battles taking place in Virginia are going to be between DC and Richmond. These are the two capital cities. So George B. McClellan, who was in charge of the Army of the Potomac, this is the Union Army, attacking Richmond uh, end up getting stalled by the Confederate General Thomas Stonewall Jackson. So he is a Confederate general who stalled the Union attack. So this is following uh, Bull Run and by stalling the attack enough, potentially left Washington DC vulnerable. And in the middle of this campaign in Virginia, whereas first it was the North who was attacking the South, soon the tables turn and pretty soon it's the Confederacy attacking Washington DC. 
Two armies meet again at the same exact location, but this time the Confederacy is on the attack. And once again, the second Battle of Bull Run, like the first one, the Confederacy wins. And so much of these early engagements in the Virginia theater can really be described as a Union disaster. You know, the, the war in the early years of the conflict is not going really as expected for the North. And there's potentially a situation where the Union capital of Washington, D.C. is left over because now, even in the second Battle of Bull Run, the Confederacy has once again uh, emerged victorious. That the Battle of Antietam, again, this is another battle. This time you have Confederate armies in Maryland, right? And if you recall, Maryland, that is a border state, which is on the side of the Union. So in the early years of the Virginia theater, when the Civil War breaks out, you have Confederate troops in Union territory, which given the expe expectations at the beginning of the war, which was a quick Union victory. Now, this idea of a quick victory is out of the picture, but many believe that the Union would still win. Uh, by the Battle of Antietam, when there are Confederate soldiers marching in Union territory, there are some even questioning whether or not this would be a victory at all. So uh, really during the early years of the war, like I mentioned before, it can be described as a disaster for the Union, so much so that the General-in-Chief, George B. McClellan, is fired by Abraham Lincoln. And the question is, well, who's going to lead Union armies in Virginia? Meanwhile, in the Western theater... The Western theater is where the fighting takes place really everywhere but Virginia. It is mainly being fought over waterways and railroad lines. It's really the Union or the North. Let me scroll down here a little bit. It's the Union effort to cut off Confederate supply lines. So it's the effort by Union armies to take over rivers like the Mississippi River, the Tennessee River, uh, take over vital railroad junctions to where that Southern army in Virginia can no longer be supplied from the rest of the Confederacy. There, the Army of the West, which is the name given to the Army of the Western, Western Theater, led by Ulysses S. Grant, so he is the general of Union forces in the West, there things are going much more according to plan. At the Battle of Shiloh, although it was a close battle, so this is a battle, the Union is victorious, right? So you got a Union victory. So in the early years of the war, two different kind of conflicting theaters. In Virginia, things are a disaster for the North. In the Western theater, when it comes to cutting off vital supply lines, the Union is having a lot more success.